he's going to try to shake some things up this season. He is, and it's obviously a defensive-minded head coach, a defensive assistant, become defensive coordinator, and he believes that th his program at Colorado can set the tone defensively in the Pac-12. And oh, by the way, I think the Pac-12 could use that, quite frankly. Trying to enhance the defense. Meanwhile, for CSU, it is year five for Mike Bobo. And the good news is Mike's starting to feel a lot better after dealing with an immune disorder one year ago that caused him to miss more than 10 days of preseason camp and really derail the Rams season. He's back, he's healthy, he's feeling good, and he gives the Rams a chance tonight. Yeah, his energy, his leadership, all of those things, but his personal revival, in a sense, from every aspect, physically and emotionally, and probably summed up spiritually, and that young man is in a really good place. Colorado won the coin toss and will receive. Davis since that kickoff out of the end zone. Our first look at Steven Montez, the outstanding quarterback for CU. Native of El Paso, Texas. His dad was his quarterback's coach in high school. Also had a cup of coffee with the Oakland Raiders, quarterback at Texas Tech. Loves to paint, loves to draw. And oh, by the way, he holds 34 school records here in Colorado. When it comes to passing the football, and he's going to be on display tonight. And Kelly, you think he's got a chance to sneak into the first round of next year's draft. Yeah, pure arm talent. A little more maturity is needed. Every once in a while, he has some hiccups in terms of getting through his progression. He'll have to solve those issues throughout this season. Hand off to Fontenot. And Alex Fontenot stopped after a two-yard game. Jamal Hicks brought him down. And we talked with offensive coordinator Jay Johnson yesterday, and he said that he's going to try to slow Steven Montez down early. He talks about the ability to be smooth and slow your feet down. And you can tell if the quarterback is too hyped up. It starts with the ground up. We'll keep an eye on that this evening. Second down and seven. Montez under center with a clean pocket and a quick penalty flag. He'll back up the Buffs five. Ball start, number nine, offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Michael Mothershed, our lead official tonight as we take a look at our impact players this evening. For Colorado, K.D. Nixon, he's actually the sidekick to LaVisca Chenault and the beneficiary of having Chenault on the field. And then Manny Jones is a defensive end for Colorado State. Roy, Colorado State has to create more pressure this season, and it has to start with number 33, Manny Jones. After the penalty, 12 yards to go for CU, opening possession of the night. Nowhere to run, stacked up at the original line of scrimmage. And bolting ahead is Fontenot. He'll pick up three more yards. It'll bring up third down, Ellison Hubbard with a stop. And Ellison Hubbard is one of those big tackles inside, and so it's about stopping the run early and forcing a pass out of Steven Montez, and then what we just talked about out of Manny Jones and also Hubbard, you have to get pressure on the quarterback here tonight. Russell in motion on third down. Montez fires a shot downfield. Incomplete and a late flag trying to spot Chanel. That's a penalty and that should result in a Colorado first down. A Ajayi in coverage. Pass interference, number four, defense. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. That's an automatic first down. Rashad Ajayi is matched up in press coverage outside on one of the most physical receivers in football in LaVisca Chenault, and I thought he did a great job. 
I think right there, it's the left hand in the hold when Chenault tried to come back from the football. It's pass interference if you prevent the receiver from getting to the ball. Spot foul. Chenault now sets up shot at the 40-yard line. Inside kick. Fontenot, he's got home run ability. And tripped up crossing the 30, and the ball suddenly in business. It's really nothing fancy. It's an offensive line for Colorado that is a question mark coming into this night. But it's a bunch of double teams up front and getting aggressive early. Buffaloes go with tempo. No gain on first down. Toby McBride with the stop. And I think we will see intermittent tempo out of Colorado's new system. Remember, with Mel Tucker, it's new on both sides of the ball. The offensive play caller is Jay Johnson. And so he's getting a feel for his players for the first time. And you're going to see tempo at times when Steven Montez can handle that. So after the 32-yard run by Fontenot, second down and a long 10 for the Buffs. And a timeout called by CSU. First charge timeout. Colorado and Mike Bobo State. clearly unhappy. Timeout on the field as we step aside here in Denver. Mel Tucker, Mike Bobo, respective head coaches for CU and CSU. And there's a Georgia connection, an SEC field in this contest. More as we go through. But, of course, Mike, 20 years at Georgia. Mel Tucker, three years there as a defensive play caller. And away we go on second down. New running back is Jaron Mangum, the talented freshman, and there goes Montez across the 20 into the red zone. It'll be third down and short coming up. Jamal Hicks, another tackle on this drive. And this is a part of Montez's game that I think is underrated. He actually has some pretty good straight line speed. Double wide receivers on both sides, and then they motion the back out, empty backfield. Typically, that is high alert quarterback draw, and that's exactly what it was on that play. Montez, they'll give him the first down. Jay Johnson quickly working through his offensive script that he talked to us about yesterday. Yeah, the dirty dozen, they call it. They'll script those first 12 plays. You see that a lot in college football. First carry in the career of Jaron Mango. Freshman from Detroit, reported back in spring practice as he bolts ahead for a gain of four. Jalen Bates brought him down, the transfer from Arizona State, and Mangum is a running back that this coaching staff is very high on Kelly. It, it's only a matter of time, and the thing that's keeping him off the field more is the fact that he's still learning how to pass protect. you got to protect your quarterback, but talent, no doubt. Growth in spring and camp has him getting playing time here in the opener. As the bloodlines, his dad was a linebacker in the Mac, and there he goes towards the goal line. It'll be first down and goal for CU after a gain of 12. And this is where you see a, a youngster that a running back can play early on first and second down because of stuff like this. You just point him in the right direction. Where is the point of attack? Be disciplined and stay at that point of attack. But if he wants to be on the field for three downs, he needs to learn how to pass protect and once in a while run some routes as well. That will come. LaVisca Chenault not on the field for this first down and goal play. Mangum inside give, probing. Nowhere to run, stacked up and driven backwards. Kelly, he'll lose a yard. And Roy, that's the disruption up front that we talked about. Is LaVisca Chenault is coming back in, and Colorado State has to get more direct, disruptive on the defensive side, but this is where LaVisca Chenault is at his best. He's a physical runner of the football. They will give it to him in a mul multitude of different ways, and then outside matched up one-on-one -on -one at the top, which he is right here. What a weapon in the red zone. Fontenot checks back in in the backfield. He'll get the call. Far side. Sent 
down quickly at the two yard line Cameron Carter and Max McDonald. And Chenault is yelling for the football. He had one on one outside press coverage and he wanted to fade. Third and goal. Montez with time to the end zone. Caught for the touchdown. Jalen Harris, the big tight end from Auburn. His first catch for the Buffs, and it goes for six. And you saw that tempo again. Jalen Harris is that big tight end that's really learning how to catch the football. He was an inline blocker at Auburn. He runs the simple angle route outside, and Jamal Hicks is a safety that was on him that didn't get lined up quickly because of the quick pace that Colorado went with, and Hicks just ended up out of position on that play. Nice play called by Jay Johnson. James Stefano on for the point after. And the second oldest player in the FBS converts. And our new score with 9.30 remaining. Here in a fast-moving first quarter, 7-0. Buffaloes over CSU. And Jalen Harris, the transfer from Auburn. First score of the night. It's the only top 20 matchup of the weekend, and we've got it for you tomorrow night on ABC, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, number 16 Auburn, and number 11 Oregon from AT&T Stadium in beautiful Arlington, Texas. Of course, you can watch it live on the ESPN app. Anywhere you may be traveling tomorrow, Justin Herbert, a Heisman candidate. Kelly, he may be the number one pick in the draft next summer. We'll see, but what a great matchup tomorrow night. Yeah, and and Bo Nix as well as we look at the scoring drive and this is a statement drive 10 plays there were actually two passes one of them didn't count because it was pass interference on LaVisca Chenault but it was a, a statement drive Colorado State can you defend our run and the answer on that drive was absolutely not even though it was topped off with a pass into the end zone Davis Price set to kick this one away for the Buffs coming off a five and seven season very unusual Colorado won its first five contests of the year lost seven in a row as Anthony Hawkins takes it from three yards deep and an empty move still keeps the play alive and tripped up crossing the 20. First look at Colin Hill red shirt junior out of Moore South Carolina making his ninth career start tonight and his story is very complex towards ACL twice both in the left knee he's back he's healthy. And he thinks he's got a chance to lead CSU to a win here tonight. Empty backfield on first and 10 from the 20. Warren Jackson, all six, six of them, catches the first pass of the night. And Jackson ushered out of bounds at the 25 by Jonathan Van Dees. And Warren Jackson, one of our impact players tonight. And Warren Jackson is 6'6", 225 pounds, so it's the physicality at the position and the contested catches. And he's going to be matched up on Delrick Abrams. We call him Slim. He'll be number one, the defensive back on number nine, Warren, and then also the middle linebacker, the volume tackler, Nate Landman. After a gain of six, second down and four. Hand off to Jalen Thomas. And the freshman from Colorado Springs tripped up after a short game. So Tyson Summers will test Colorado State's offensive line early. And this is probably the first true pass down. And it's really in that range that Colorado State could choose to run it. But this is where Colin Hill has to show up. He's waited for a long time for this moment. He has to be really efficient at decision making and accuracy on downs just like this. Tyson Summers, the defensive play caller for the Buffaloes. Third down and three for CSU. Hill with plenty of time, fires a pass, caught for big yardage in the plus territory. And a nice pitch and catch, Marvin Kinsey out of the backfield for a gain of 30. And Kinsley was, Kinsey was matched up on Nate Landman, the middle linebacker, and I'll take that matchup any time because Kinsey has some wiggle to him. Simple route out of the backfield, the swing route. High probability of completing it, but matched up on Landman, who has seen the taillights of the running back. 
From the 42, Kenji gets the call again. Mike Bobo told us this week, you know, Kenji's problem is sometimes he's too confident. I've got to reel him back in. Good thing he didn't do it on that last play. But he's also hungry. He had a great freshman year, had an ACL. Confidence isn't his shortcoming. Sometimes his head coach has to reel him back in. But he wants to finish well, does Kinsey. And you can see it on that play. He's been hungry all camp. He's been working extremely hard. And they'll need a big night out of him tonight. Dante right in motion, fade route, Jackson looking for the back shoulder, incomplete and well covered by Delrick Abrams. Well, let me tell you what you don't want to do when you throw a fade to a 6'6 receiver is throw a back shoulder. You want to throw it up as a jump ball, and it's not 50-50 with Warren Jackson. It's more like 75-25, and that was a bad throw early by Colin Hill. you got to get that out there and give your 6'6 guy a chance to go up and get the rebound. Third down and seven. Eight man box. Hill with time. Floats one long. Towards the end zone. Cut! Touchdown, CSU Dante Wright, the freshman. The Royal rivalry game is maybe more than any other an answer. Colorado goes down and scores on a methodical 10 play drive, mostly runs, and Colorado State has a chance to answer, and they do exactly that. Well thrown to the youngster, Dante Wright. Welcome to Colorado State football. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number five, Colorado State. There was a penalty on sportsmanlike conduct on against Marvin Kinsey in the post touchdown celebration. But what a statement reception by the freshman Dante Wright. Max Paduska on for the extra point. Mike Bobo told us yesterday Dante Wright soft spoken on his recruiting visit to Fort Collins. He really never said a word and Mike was concerned he wasn't interested in the Rams. Turns he out he wasn't coming. Yeah, he was. Absolutely. They played a little game inside. Dante Wright in the slot and they're going to play what's called a switch route. The slot receiver switches and runs the outside vertical. And Colorado in their new system just simply Worked on top of it. You can see the confusion outside to begin with. So Wright then finishes the play, but how about the seed thrown by Colin Hill? That was big time. You have to hit plays like that. It was engineered perfectly. You can't let one like that slip by. So this quarterback that's waited a long time for moments like this, and he throws to the youngster that hasn't been on campus that long. A special start for Colin Hill. We asked him, how have you improved since we saw you last season? He said, you know what? I can go into the weight room. I can do squats. Yep. I can lift weights again with my lower body. And I feel great for the first time. Eighty yards in six plays for that quick scoring drive for CSU. Rams in search of an identity this season. They may have found one early. What a start in this Rocky Mountain showdown. Dave, thank you very much, and welcome to the Mile High City Broncos Stadium for the Rocky Mountain Showdown. Downtown Denver is electric, and we've had plenty of fireworks so far. Tied at seven with Kelly Stopper and Lauren Sisler. I am Roy Philpott.
Rams haven't won it in four years. They're trying to change that here tonight. And this has already been a lot of fun with an outstanding atmosphere. Yeah, the atmosphere was epic because of all of the weather delays and there was a battle of the bands and getting everyone fired up and certainly this is the right atmosphere to in this rivalry in this building for some time. First and 10 for Steven Montez and Alex Fontenot. And Fontenot quickly bottled up. He'll gain two and drop quickly by Fox. Well, the first touchdown of the night, courtesy of Jalen Harris, the transfer from Auburn, called four passes in 42 games on the Plains. Quick touchdown this evening, and then Dante Wright moments ago from 39 yard, yards out. A talented freshman reeled in a beautiful dime dropped in by Colin Hill. After a gain of two. Seven man box and the Rams stripped away. Down the field, incomplete. Should not be intended target. Hicks in coverage. Well, Jalen Harris got us started tonight, Kelly. Yeah, it was a methodical drive, mostly runs, nine of the ten plays, and then this was a little bit of tempo that caught CSU sleeping to some extent, but then it was a veteran quarterback that's waited quite some time to a newbie. And drops it in the shirt pocket of Dante Wright. The freshman goes and makes a big play early in this one. That was a terrific answer by the Rams. Rams with some momentum. CU facing third down. Montez flush. Flag on the field and dropped. Right at the line of scrimmage, it'll bring up fourth down pending the penalty. Now McBride caught him by his shoestring and a nice stop. I think Arlington Hambright, the left tackle, is going to get called for leaving early. Holding number 65 offense. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. It was actually the right guard, Holby Purcell. Very physical, but Colorado State is getting a little bit of push. You can see him right there on the right side. There was pressure on the quarterback anyway. And Montez actually missed a receiver, the big tight end, right over the middle of the field early in that pass route. Alex Kinney, now healthy after breaking his collarbone last season, steps onto the field for the first time. And sends a putt. It takes a CSU bounce out of bounds. Timeout on the field. We're tied at seven as we step aside here in Denver. ESPN College Football brought to you by the new Duracell Optimum. Now Colin Hill leads the charge for CSU. The redshirt junior has gone through a couple of ACL tears, and I tell you what, Kelly, he's been impressive in the early going, making just his ninth career start tonight. Yeah, I had a great conversation with him. After we met with him, he and I talked in the hallway, and I said, you know what? This is your time. You deserve to be here. You persevere. Trust your eyes and let it rip, and so far, so good. Thomas, the running back on first down with a gaping hole through the A gap. Crossing the 40 to be second down and one. The first tackle of the night made by Nate Landon. And I would have had the same advice for Steven Montez, but the difference is Montez has played this, this rivalry multiple times already, and this is the first opportunity in, in reality that Colin Hill has had to play in this game, and it's a special game. Thomas, the nice cut. That'll move the chains ahead of the 45. Derek Abrams with a stop. And you talked about it. That was a nice cut. That was designed to go to the right side, but the vision by running backs, probably the number one trait is vision. And the second one is to hang on to the football. And the third one, this young man has. Bobo told us he's the most violent runner out of that entire group that might be by committee here today. After the first down. Methodical approach offensively for CSU thus far. Play action, Hill to the air. 
caught right as second grab. That'll move the chains once again after a gain of 12. That's consummate Bobo. A little bit of pre-snap motion to give the quarterback a little bit of intel on what the coverage is. See man-to-man -man outside on Dante Wright, and then it's a simple outcome. Pitch and catch, if the timing is right, it's a good play, and it was on that one. Tied at seven, CSU with momentum on its side. Thomas, the stutter step, bolting across the 40, as Carson Wells makes the stop. When we talked about Colin Hill, two ACL tears, this is actually his first start in a season opener, if you can believe that, for a player who seems like has been in Fort Collins for a really long time. I can remember when Jim McElwain was actually the coach at that time recruiting this young man. I was in for a visit and he called me into the office and he said, this kid is going to change things in Fort Collins and he's been hurt ever since, but this is his time to shine here in this, this one. Prentice the fullback, off of play action, Hill fires in his direction. That's a gain of six and a first down for one of the team leaders and emotional leaders for the CSU program. You can call Adam Prentice Captain America from this point forward because of all the things that he does. His teammates love this young man. All the dirty work, he's physical. He's a rare breed in college football, which is called a fullback. The fullbacks not only have to be essentially another offensive lineman, but they have to be really good pass catchers, and Prentice is that. He's a former walk-on and now lead blocker extraordinaire for the Rams. Play action again. Hill takes a shot towards the end zone in traffic. And nearly picked off, was it? It was. The transfer from SMU. On the field. Mikhail is an interception in the end the zone for a touchback. Carson Wells, and we'll take another look. And no doubt that replay will want to take a really close look at this. If Mikhail... Onu actually hung on to this. It would be a terrific catch. He acts like he's the receiver. Played over top, and I think it's a catch. Remember what the rule is. You have to have firm control with your hand or arm, and then you have to have a body part that comes down, and then you have to time, have to have the time to make a play common to the game, and going to the ground is that. If Olnu controls it all the way through, which I believe he does, that's a terrific play and a bad read by Colin Hill. The first turnover of the night, and CU unveils its brand new boxing robe to the player that created said turnover. <laughs> well, we've seen it all now. Play stands is called. CU takes over our first turnover of the night in this Rocky Mountain showdown. K.D. Nixon went to the same high school as LaVisca Chenault, and he picks up nine, maybe ten on first down. I thought the road you had boxing gloves and a punching bag was the rumor. Where, where was that? Mel Tucker was a little nervous that we, we show that on camera and then they never get to use it. That would be a bad <laughs> look, but his transfer safety, Mikhail Onu, bailed him out of that one. Onu was banged up last year at SMU, didn't play or really live up to his potential the way he wanted. He has upgraded this Colorado secondary. Mangum straight ahead. And after the first down gain, he'll pick up two more. Roy, I think Colorado State has to be happy defensively with what they're getting. This is the second year in John Jancic's system. They got ran out of this building last year at this time. And he was playing a lot of freshmen and sophomore. They all have had one more birthday, what matters in this game, and they're getting off of blocks and being disruptive up front. Montez, dangerous toss, and Hawkins nearly picked it off. Manny Jones applying the pressure. And Hawkins was thinking about six points. And Manny Jones is the ringleader up front. We talked to him last night, and he said that their defense will be better. He thinks they're more talented. They're all more mature than they were this time last year. And it was Jones on the pressure, and that's what led to the quick throw, and it was an errant pass. And Montez was fortunate that one didn't go the other way. He'll look for his guy on this play. 
LaVisca Chenault, top of the screen, flag on the field. Montez wants it all. There it goes. Chenault bumped. There's another flag. Rashad Ajayi in coverage. And we've got to unpack this last sequence here. Well, it was definitely, there are two fouls on the defense. Offside, that penalty is declined. Pass interference, number four. That penalty will be enforced 15 yards from the previous spot. That's an automatic first down. And this is Rashad Ajayi's second pass interference, matched up press coverage on LaVisca Chenault, and actually it's catch coverage off off the ball to some extent, and that's where you see the speed. It's hard to get a body on that man. He's so physical, but what Ajayi needed to do is turn around and find the football at the end. It was underthrown. It's difficult for the defensive back, but turn around and find the ball. From the 47 play action for Montez, looking downfield, caught by Harris. Drifting out of bounds near the 30, his second reception of the night. Taiwan Francis with the tackle. And Harris is lined up on the opposite side. It's play action and then boot outside by Montez. And Jamal Hicks just takes a bad angle. He thought he had an interception. The safety read it well. He just didn't play the ball well. Kelly Harris caught four passes in 42 games at that? Auburn. He's lighted up in the Pac-12 so far. The young man has some ball skills. Once he didn't have to block somebody every, every down. Mango near side and lasso from behind after a short game by Jalen Bates. Interesting with these two programs, transfer players, impact players on both sides tonight. Bates from Arizona State, and we just spoke about Harris moments ago from Auburn. We'll hear from Tron Folsom, also a linebacker that's outside that was lighting it up in camp. He's transferred in from Troy, and those two guys, along with Jalen Bates, make a difference in this defense. That's the end of the first quarter. And a fast 15 minutes in the books here in the Mile High City. What a start for both sides. Jalen Harris got us started earlier from five yards out. His first touchdown as a CU buff. Rams respond the dime drop to Dante Wright moments ago. Back in downtown Denver, 15 minutes in the books in the latest Rocky Mountain showdown. We're tied at seven. Action-packed first quarter, big plays on both sides, a turnover by the Rams, and right now, CU driving inside the Rams' 30-yard line. With Kelly Stauffer, Lauren Sisler, Roy Philpott. Mangum, the running back, he'll get the call. Twisting and turning inside the 25. It'll bring up third down and short. Daquan Jackson from his outside linebacker position is doing a really good job of showing late and then knifing in and getting to that running back in the backfield. Very good run defense. And Colorado really hasn't an had an answer to the guy off the edge for CSU defensively. Well, on third down, Montez off his back foot. Couldn't get enough mustard on that passing attempt. Incomplete. Looking for Mangum out of the backfield. And Roy, that's one of the knocks on Montez. And this might be four down territory, but throwing off your back foot. We've watched tape on him, and sometimes he gets off balance. Jay Johnson, the offensive coordinator, told, told us that. There was pressure there, but that there wasn't that much pressure. You have to step into that pressure and throw the ball accurately, and that would have been an easy conversion. James Stefano on to attempt this field goal. Officially a 42-yard effort. The second oldest player in the FBS ranks from the right hash. On the way, and that kick is good, and Colorado back in front, 10-7. Less than a minute into our second quarter. 
Now the stars are out tonight. We've got plenty of star power in this contest. And LaVisca Chenault, guy we're going to be talking about all season long, the junior from the Lone Star State, actually from the football factory that is DeSoto High School. Kelly was a mid-season All-American just one year ago, missed three games with a shoulder injury, also dealt with a toe issue. All you need to know is this, Mel Kiper right now has to know and believe that this is one of the top receivers in the country, number 19 on his big board. LaVisca Chenault, one of the best receivers in America. I think he's the best playmaker in the country. I don't know that he's the best receiver yet, although this new offense will give him an opportunity to prove that he's a he's a consummate route runner that can handle the entire route tree. And we know that he's physical. If you press the guy, it's a mistake. We've already seen that. Ajayi tried to press him and he went around him, pass interference, tried to catch him in man-to-man -man coverage, and tried to get a stiff arm on him when he went by and he about broke his arm on him. He's so physical as a playmaker, but is he a route runner? If he proves this year that he is and comes out early, he could skyrocket up the, up the draft board. Davis Price, the senior. On the ensuing kickoff. From the goal line. Little shake and bake from Hawkins. Flag on the field as he's brought down short of the 25. Busy night already for this veteran officiating crew led by Michael Mothershed. Illegal block in the back. Number 85, receiving team. Half the distance to the goal line. First down. So the Rams will take over after the penalty is walked off, and that's a costly miscue against CSU. Well, another situational part of football for Colin Hill right here in a backed up, very emotional game. He's played really well. I didn't agree with the last read on the interception. The safety read it well and was getting over the top of that route. You can check that down and go somewhere else. So right here, you can't be tentative, but you do have to take care of the football. Kenzie is the running back on first down. Over left tackle. And he'll be stopped after a gain of a yard, maybe two, by Terrence Lang. Ueli, the true freshman left guard, is trying to get up to the second level on Nate, late, Nate Landman. And that's not easy for a veteran, but it's the first freshman to play on the offensive line in 30-plus years for Colorado State. And that's a tough assignment to get up on number 53, a volume tackler for CU. The jet sweep. Near side, here comes Wright. His third touch of the night, this one resulting in another first down. He's been very explosive. He really has, and giving it to him on the jet sweep, which Mike Bobo told us that he would do this some. But they've moved him around. They've thrown in the ball out in the flat. They obviously threw the vertical on the switch route, and then this is just the jet sweep. He's doing a very good job, and how about the, the true freshman being highlighted in the game plan? Right in motion. Play action. Looking for right again. The freshman on the wheel route. Incomplete. Colin Hill dropped a dime earlier. And Lauren, I tell you what, he looks awfully good tonight. Yeah, Colin Hill coming off the field so calm and composed after that interception he threw into the end zone on the last series. He spent some time in the Manning Passing Academy over the summer where he was garnered a lot of praise from both Peyton Manning and his dad, Archie, on his abilities, but also how he carries himself. He's a humble leader, and that is so apparent. Last night in the meeting rooms, when he introduced himself, he's quiet, but he's a humble leader, and he embraces this role as the CEO of this offense. No question about that. Kenzie left side with some nice real estate over there, brought down at the 30, close to another first down. Colin Hill managing this game quite well so far. Yeah, and what we talked about kind of raw in the in the hallway after our meeting with him last night, just he and I together, and I said, you know what? You've earned the right to get in this game and be free. You know, sometimes in this game you fill up tight. I said, don't do that. 
at my age, I look back and think, you know what? Let it out on the field. Trust your eyes and let it rip. And he's making good decisions, and I don't think he will bat an eye on that interception. Power formation for Kinsey on first down as he barrels his way ahead. That's a gain of three in CSU on the move. And I'm assuming that Marcus McElroy's ankle that Mike Bobo talked about wasn't up to par in warm-ups before this game because we haven't seen a whole lot of him. It's been Marvin Kinsey for the most part at that running back position and doing a nice job. And that in-question, unproven offensive line is getting some movement as well. Major question mark for CSU entering this season. Prentice in the flats makes a nifty cut into plus territory. And the Rams on the move. That reception actually made by Trey McBride. I don't know if that was a great play action or an RPO zone inside and Colin Hill pulls it and throws it outside. It's a great block by the other tight end, Cameron Butler outside, but to the fullback, the do everything, Captain America. Actually, it was Trey McBride, the co-starter at tight end. And Mike Bobo loves two tight ends in the game, and you saw both of them working in concert there. There goes Wright. Plants, cuts, explodes. Close to another first down. How about we build touches for the true freshman? It's been on campus and still hasn't found his way to biology class. That's a pretty good job by Mike Bobo identifying where he can get that. He told us that they lost a lot of wide receiver talent. The best thing we have going is our tight end group. But he's finding a new playmaker in Dante Wright early in this one. Jackson in the slot. He'll shift sides. Play action for Hill with a pocket off his back foot. Jackson makes the grab, shoved out of bounds. Derek Abrams in coverage. Warren Jackson, maybe the next big receiver for this Rams team, and check that. And a good decision by the quarterback, Colin Hill. His first look was the tight end in the flat, and then the second level receiver was coming over, and that's who the quarterback Jack actually threw it to. A slight adjustment, trusted his eyes, and got the ball out there accurately. Jackson replacing Preston Williams from a season ago and his 95 receptions and 1,400 yards. Doing a good job so far. Kenzie straight ahead. I love the mix right now offensively for Colorado State. Mike Bobo talked to us about it. He wanted more of a controlled attack. They actually identified this last year somewhere around the Utah State game when they played well that this group deals with the game better when they can be in the huddle together as opposed to no huddle spread and more tempo when they can look each other in the eye they seem to respond better so Mike Bubble said all right we'll do that more control more formation and more window dressing which is actually Mike Bobo's calling card anyway second and nine Hill back to the air and to his tight end far side that's a first down First and goal for CSU. McBride is second catch on this possession. Play action means nothing if you can't run the football. There's a run presence right now that Mike Bobo is trying to get back. And then McBride just steps by that outside linebacker that sees run first. He steps up, does number 31. Van Deest and the tight end goes right by him. That's quintessential. Mike Bobo clear back to when he played at Georgia. He called plays for Mark Rick at Georgia. He's doing it right now on this field tonight. Hill looking for Jackson, who's open in the end zone. Reeled in for the touchdown. And the Rams back in front. Warren Jackson, 6'6", 220. Colin Hill's charge is to allow that young man to go up and make a play. Remember the underthrown fade earlier in this game, and this was perfect. Colin Hill, trust your eyes, trust your weapon at 6'6", and throw it in a location where he can go up and make a contested catch, and Warren Jackson does it extremely well on that play. First touchdown of the season for Jackson. He's become a leader. 
has the size and all the tools you want at wide receiver up in Fort Collins. Paduska's extra point on the way. And our new score, 8 39 to play in the first half, 14 to 10. The Rams, their first lead of the night. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Corona Premier. Lower carbs, lower calories, higher expectations. Enjoy the view. Well, at Georgia State of Mind tonight, Mike Bobo played for the Dogs as a quarterback in the mid-90s, was a part of the program in Athens, Georgia, for more than 20 years. Meanwhile, Mel Tucker came to Boulder, Colorado, as a former defensive play caller for the Dogs the past three seasons. It is his first year in the Pac-12, trying to make a name and trying to change the culture for a program that he has deemed to be a sleeping giant. He may change the culture in the entire Pac-12 conference if he gets that SEC-style 3-4 tight defense going. Braxton Davis sends this one towards the end zone and out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Steven Montez, fifth-year player, also a native of the Lone Star State in El Paso. His dad played quarterback for Texas Tech and the Raiders. Loves to paint, loves to draw. If you didn't know, he holds 34 school records and counting. How many are there? That's a lot. Seems like that would be about all of them, but an intriguing young man and arm talent that is hard to beat in all of college football. There are some things that he has to clean up, a little more maturity dealing with environments like this, eliminate some mistakes that are head scratchers, but he has all the physical tools that you would want in a quarterback at the next level. Fontenot motions out. Montez across the middle. Chenault. First reception crossing the 30. That's a gain of eight. He's been a factor already tonight with two pass interference penalties called on the defense against number two. Yeah, and he gets it done in a lot of different ways. You can get the football. You can dictate coverage. You can create pass interference because you're a physical guy. But now I think we're going to start to see Jay Johnson's list. I think there's a list that says number two on it, and it's almost guaranteed touches for Chenault, and I think we're going to see that on this drive. Preseason All-American candidate makes his second grab with the running lane. And a stop made crossing the 45 by Jamal Hicks, who was hanging on for dear life. Yeah, it doesn't get any easier than this in terms of a guaranteed or manufactured touch. Jay Johnson told us, the offensive coordinator, that he has a list. A lot of coordinators do, especially when they have playmakers, the magnitude of LaVisca Chenault. I haven't heard from number two for a while, so he picks a play where there's about a 90% probability that Chenault is going to get the football. Exploded for over 200 yards through the air last year in this same contest. Inside hand, Alfantino spun down. After gaining 11 more yards, that'll be a first down. Cameron Carter, Jamal Hicks combined to make the stop. Buffs in business. Yeah, Colorado State was bringing a little pressure off the right side of the offense. The right tackle, William Sherman, the youngster, pointed it out. And then Colorado State was unsound inside where Colorado wanted to run that football right down Broadway. From the 41. Montez play action loops one down the field far side real dead inside the five yard line Tony Brown the transfer from Texas Tech there is a flag at the 20 and we'll have to confirm the catch as well this was dropped outside this is the definition of a fade route fade your receiver outside and Tony Brown does an amazing job Holding. number 26 defense that penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. And Cameron, who the holding was on, was inside it to Dimitri Stanley on the inside receiver and grabbed a hold of his jersey. But Tony Brown adjusted well to an extremely well-thrown fade route by Steven Montez. After a gain of 38, it's first down and goal.
action up bottom of your screen. Fontenot, nowhere to run. He'll lose two yards, brought down at the six by Carter. And he's been active in this first half. He really has, and you know why he's active. That middle linebacker has better play out of his defensive line. That's what defensive linemen do. They occupy and disrupt up front and allow guys like Carter to run free like he did on that play. Now Chenault, man-to-man -man coverage, bottom of your screen. You wonder if Colorado wants to take a chance. Matching him up against Andre Neal. Hand off. Mangum straight ahead. Punching. Did he get there? Touchdown, Colorado. Bro, you've already talked about it, that Mangum is that physical downhill pile mover for this offense. He's a freshman from Detroit, Michigan. That was well blocked, and then it's a push at the end. Does that ball ever get across the end zone line, the goal line? And it absolutely does. What a response by CU. This is a game of responses thus far, and it seems like both clubs are up to the task. Stefano on for the extra point. After the first touchdown in young Karen Mangum's career, Colorado back out in front in this Rocky Mountain showdown. 17-14, 537 to go here in our first half. LaVisca Chennault Jr., a one-of-a-kind player, certainly it looks the part in every way. When he's out here, he commands this team, he commands this offense, he's got an air about him. But it's taken a unique, special kind of ownership of his college football career to honor his late father who was killed in a pedestrian accident on the side of Highway 12 in Texas in 2009. LaVisca was in the car to witness this tragedy at the young age of 10. From that day forward, though, LaVisca never cut his hair. So each of those dreads that now hang below his shoulders are to honor his father, LaVisca Sr., who has had a tremendous impact on his life. And, Lauren, he really has grown up a lot in the last year, emerging onto the scene in the Pac-12 a season ago. All-American candidate this year and one of the top receivers available for next year's draft. Rocky Mountain Showdown has been rocking so far this evening. 17 to 14, Colorado leading CSU. And LaVisca Chenault's potential really through the roof. He's got a chance to skyrocket up a lot of teams' draft boards if he produces a good season this year. He does. He's one of the most physical wide receivers I've seen in college football for a long, long while. And this offense that he's in new this year and under Jay Johnson as the offensive coordinator, LaVisca Chenault will get an opportunity to prove that he's also a, a really good consummate route runner and he's going to get that in and then we see the dialed up plays where you get his playmaking ability out in space that's where you see his special attitude and effort tremendous talent five and change remaining in our first half hill kenzie Two cuts, crossing the 30. It'll be second and short. Landman with a tackle. That was a great job of decision-making by Colin Hill. They had a game outside. They had two levels of corner routes, and then it was the check down. You can't get bored with doing the simple things correctly. That's why he threw the interception earlier in the game. That should have been a check down because the safety read that route well and got over the top of it. That was tremendous by Colin Hill on that point. After a gain of seven. Out of the gun, it's play action for Hill. There's a missile and a first down. The drive continues as Jackson is ushered out of bounds at the 40. Warren Jackson is a different type of physical receiver than Chenaultics. This is great coverage by Slim Abrams. It doesn't get any better than that, but a well-thrown ball 
to a receiver that can catch it in contested spaces like Warren Jackson can't. There's really no coverage for it. That's the NFL motto. If I throw it to my big receiver, you can't cover it. Dante Wright. A nifty looking play close to midfield and shoved out of bounds in plus territory. That's a gain of 11 yards. Derek Abrams credited with a stop. And a really easy supplement to the run game. The run game has been good in the tackle box. And the way they've gotten to the edges is not with running backs. But Mike Bobo has used Dante Wright on several occasions with little passes in the flat off the motion and then jet swoops like that one. Both of these quarterbacks starting to heat up in our first half here in downtown Denver. Kenzie left tackle on first down. He'll gain three. What did Mike Bobo tell us this week? Colin Hill can finish my sentences. He knows what I'm going to call. He understands what's in my brain. It's a it's a beautiful place to be as a play caller and a quarterback. And even though Colin Hill hasn't played a ton because of the two ACLs, he's been around this offense a ton. And they're on the same page. And that's kind of a magical time for those two guys. Power formation for the Rams on second down. Prentice in motion. And 46 will be the lead blocker once again, doing the dirty work. And on second down, a gain of one and a half yards, the stop by Landman. So, Roy, here we are again at, at really money down, third and about six. It's typically a pass down. And Colin Hill has trusted his eyes thus far. And Mike Bobo has called some really good concepts in the pass game. We'll see what CU does about it in coverage right here. Right now there's a little confusion. It might be a great time for a timeout. And that's exactly what Mike Bobo elects to call. Second charge timeout. 224 remaining Colorado here in our State. first half. Timeout on the field as we step aside. We've got football headed your way Labor Day night. Remember Ian Book and Notre Dame, they reached the playoff a season ago, ninth ranked to start 2019. We'll travel down to Louisville and the first season for Scott Satterfield, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Irish return 14 starters. They've got to be considered one of the top teams to return to the college football playoff in January. That's headed your way Monday night. No NFL this weekend, remember, the college game takes control. Third down coming up for CSU. Right motions out. Hill looks his direction. The freshman standing. Crossing pattern. Cameron Butler tripped up short of the 40. It'll bring up fourth down and short. Abrams, a.k.a. Slim, with a tackle. And I think Mike Bobo is going to go for it right here. And, and Butler made a bad decision. you got to understand what you need to convert. And there were crossing routes inside. It's the mesh route that we've talked about in the past out of that air raid offense. Crossing routes, the tight end Butler comes open. you got to plant your left foot and go get what your team needs. We'll see if the offensive line gets movement here. Jalen Thomas is the running back. Rams need two. There goes Wright. He's got the first down and more. Dante Wright to the end zone. His second touchdown of the night. This one from 41 yards out. The formation screams inside run with the personnel grouping and instead Mike Bobo's a fly sweep, gives it to his new best weapon, Dante Wright. Good block out on the edge, but it's all about the gifting of that young man. Play caller Mike Bobo has discovered something here tonight that the Mountain West isn't going to like the rest of the season. Dante Wright, the two-time Pensacola News Player of the Year in Florida, paying dividends in game one of year one in Fort Collins. Second touchdown of the night, this one coming on fourth down, and Dante Wright, the X Factor in Denver.
College football returns in a big way tomorrow night on ABC. Down to the Lone Star State we go. The only top 25 matchup of the weekend. Oregon and Auburn, 11 versus 16, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, again on ABC. And, of course, also on the ESPN app. Rematch of the 2011 BCS Championship game. And get your popcorn ready here in Denver because this one's going to be a Wild West shootout tonight, Kelly. No doubt that this is going to be that and a discovery of a, of a new superstar in Fort Collins and Dante Wright. Buffaloes will take over at their 25 yard line trailing 21 to 17 and CU Kelly will have three timeouts to work with and this offense has been impressive in Mel Tucker's first game of his first season so far. Yeah, the offense is going pretty well. They just are facing a team that's getting it done offensively also and possessing the football to some extent and having some big plays mostly in the name of Dante Wright and Colin Hill's off to a fantastic start. 13 of eight or 13 of 16, 180 yards and two touchdowns. That one interception that was a questionable decision, but the quarterback is up to the task tonight as well. Bunch formation, Colorado. Fontenot the running back. Belted down after a gain of two. Rashad Ajayi with a tackle. And here comes Tempo. They'll give him three, second and seven. Montez, back foot toss. 112 remaining, make it 110 here in our first half. And once again, Montez throwing off of his back foot. You talked about it. Throwing to the left for a right-handed quarterback, you have to open your hips and step at your target, and he's falling away from his target, and that's exactly where the ball went. Low and outside because Montez is throwing off his back foot. Big play here at the end of our first half. Clean pocket, Montez. Directing traffic, fires it deep. Caught, plus territory, Brady Russell. Mel Tucker called him the MVP of this program so far. And that was a great scramble drill. Brady Russell came off late, followed his quarterback to the sideline. After a gain of 27, more tempo. Russell again. First down, Colorado. He'll rumble his way inside the 30. That'll stop the clock for a moment. See you with still three timeouts. It's a great time to find your tight end in this game. Brady Russell's been open multiple times tonight when Montez hasn't found him. And Colorado State's going to burn out. the timeout to try to get Colorado their defense State. time to take a breath it's and a regroup to some extent. Minute, 60 second timeout. Well, a lot headed your way this weekend. And coming up on the Wells Fargo Halftime Report, Matt Berry and company are going to preview what promises to be an unforgettable week one. We'll talk a little bit about the Pac-12 and, of course, the preview of the top 20 matchup Auburn and Oregon and listen from a Pac-12 perspective Utah very impressive last night that certainly is good for the conference a lot of people are suggesting if Oregon doesn't win that game tomorrow in Arlington Kelly that could be a major issue come playoff time we will see so 39 seconds remaining here in our first half in Denver with Kelly Stopper Lauren Sisler Roy Philpott inside Broncos Stadium at mile high. This has been a lot of fun so far in this Rocky Mountain showdown. What? Yep. Excuse me. Both of the teams have played well, and sometimes you don't get that in the first game of the season. Colorado's learning a new system on both sides of the ball, and Colorado State had a lot of unanswered questions coming into tonight. How would Colin Hill respond? He's played tremendously well. Where are the playmakers? A new one has been discovered in freshman Dante Wright, and now Colorado is going on another drive to try to close out with points in this first half. Russell in motion on first down. They'll run it. Buffs have three timeouts. They'll use one here as Fontenot gets up to the 25. First charge timeout, Colorado. Yeah, and that's a good use seconds. of kind of that time situation 
as we have two quarterbacks in this game that are very well thought of. And Colin Hill, we talked about, is playing really well. And Montez has some things that he has to adjust to. He's 8 of 12, as you can see. The one touchdown pass, but he's thrown off his back foot. He has some hiccups in his fundamentals to some extent. And then Colin Hill is just getting his first chance healthy to play in this game. And the, both of those young men are very well thought of. There isn't any question about that. And perspective on Montez, you think with a strong season, he could be a first round draft pick next summer. Yeah, and the things that are showing up tonight is what he has to eliminate. His fundamentals have to be better. Jay Johnson, his new offensive coordinator, has pinpointed those things. He has to be better with his feet. We've seen him throw off balance. He's in errant passes that were easy completion because of his footwork. Out of the quick huddle, here's play action for Montez. Looking deep, Chenault is open for the touchdown! LaVisca Chenault, one of the top receivers in the country. Six on the board from 24 yards out. Visca Chenault is a great finisher of plays in the dive into the end zone. It's as he inbounds when the ball crosses the front of that goal line or the pylon. And I think it was right in, in both cases. I think that's a tremendous finish for a touchdown by a tremendous college football playmaker. Is he fun to watch or what? So physical, so quick. The experience means everything. Now a junior, three grabs, 48 yards, and that last touchdown, a beautiful dime drop from Steven Montez. And Chenault is lined up on the left side, and it's going to be play action fake away to the right. And Rashad Ajayi gets caught looking into the backfield and loses leverage on the best player on the field tonight. And you can't do that. You have to know where number two is all the time and defensive breakdown looked into the backfield on that play action pass and that's all Chenault needs to leave you in his rear view mirror and catch a touchdown pass. Kelly, he suffered from a shoulder injury last year. There was a toe issue that kept him out of three games and also spring practice. Steven Montez said he knew he was special going back more than 18 months ago but New offensive coordinator Jay Johnson said, I didn't have in spring. I didn't know what we were going to have this year until about a week into camp. He regained his football playing shape, the weight, so to speak. He was back in rhythm. He said, uh-oh. Yeah, we can't repeat what Jay Johnson said at that point. The first time he saw the light go on and, and Chenault feel well physically, wow. Johnson himself has done a nice job calling plays. First time that's happened since 2016 when he was with Minnesota. Here's a lane. There goes Hawkins. Plus territory. A flag on the field back at the 35. Hawkins is brought down at the 10. 12 seconds remaining. And let's check the penalty and this one likely coming back. We try to catch your breath in this one tonight. The legal block in the back, number 43, receiving team. Say now penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. And Roy, that's something that we haven't talked about early in the season, especially game one. Special teams aren't practiced full speed, full contact much in camp. And some crazy things that can happen in that part of the game. Colorado State has had the upper hand in the return game. And that was a great return by Anthony Hawkins. It was called back by the block in the back right in the middle of the field. It was really unnecessary by Troy Golden. And as we catch our breath, that'll be the final play of an incredible first half here in the 91st meeting in this Rocky Mountain showdown. Halftime. 
24-21, CU leading arch rival Colorado State. Big plays galore. Dante Wright bursting onto the scene here in week one. Don't forget the Wells Fargo Halftime Report coming up next. Here in the Mile High City, you're watching the Pac-12 on ESPN. College football is back here at the Rocky Mountain Showdown. Ralphie is making her appearance once again to start our second half. And 30 minutes in the books, what a performance it has been for Colorado and Colorado State. 24-21, Kelly Stopper, Roy Philpott alongside with Lauren Sisler on the sidelines. If you like offense, if you like big plays, We've seen all of the above. These two teams on track to score 90 points and over 1,100 total yards by the time the night is done. I think if you like good football, we will have more of that in the second half. I think it was well executed. The tackling was really good for a first game. You had quarterbacks playing well. You had some playmakers. We had about everything. We're going to see more of that in the second half. This is going to be entertaining. Packed house here at Broncos Stadium at Mile High. LaVisca Chenault scored a touchdown. Touched the ball a couple of times in that first half as one of the top receivers in the country. This is what it's all about. A new star might have been born in that first half as well. Dante Wright, true freshman that hasn't said about two words to anybody since he got on campus in Fort Collins. He showed up. Davis Price will get things started. Here in the third quarter, the fair catch called for and made short of the 10. Now we take a look at our two more in a jiffy fair brought to you by to Jiffy team. Lube as we take a look at our first half highlights. Yeah, Colin Hill was trusting his eyes and throwing BBs like this to his new favorite target in Dante Wright. The true freshman was getting off early. And then throw it to your contested catch maker, which is Warren Jackson, 6'6", and then you can't lose leverage on the best player, one of the best players in all of college football, LaVisca Chenault, as Colorado State did on that drive, and Chenault made him pay for it. Both quarterbacks performing at a high level, as we expected, and Dante Wright, an emerging superstar in the Mountain West Conference. Marvin Kinsey straight ahead, and a gain of two, call it three on first down. Rams trail it by three. They have not beaten Colorado. Since Colorado, back in 2014. Colorado thinks this ball came out on that first play. And it did. Oh, I thought I saw one of the officials point in that direction. Let's see as they unpack this. Well, that's one of the things that the replay booth looks for is when the defense gives some type of indication they think the ball came out, then it's a good idea to take a closer look at it. Obviously, the replay booth is going to do that, but Colorado thinks they have the football, and now the officials are confirming that. Ruling on the field of a fumble, recovered by the defense. Michael Mothershed confirms the fumble as Kenzie lost the handle in traffic, Kelly. Well, Kenzie okay. was getting okay because it looked like the load in that first half, okay. and you have to take care of the football. Your number one responsibility. And I was literally just going to say that Colorado State has to come out here and take care of business. Is a fumble recovered by the defense. The question will be whether his forward progress was stopped. And the replay booth, I think, is taking a closer look at this as we speak. Jalen Sammy, the massive defensive tackle for Colorado, made the recovery. It's one of the anchors of that 3-4 tight defensive scheme run by the Buffs. Well, and a fumble or no is all about whether the runner is in possession of it. And then he has something other than his foot or his hand that goes to the ground. And Kinsey was running a simple zone run inside, and there's a lot of traffic. The question is, did the whistle blow? Was his forward progress stopped? Because certainly Colorado had a lot of opportunities to rip at that football, and you could see it on that replay. At the end, it was exposed. Of course, it's got to be indisputable video evidence, as most people understand by now. The ball did come out late, but I don't know 
if there's enough there to overturn the original call. Aaron Maddox, number nine for CU, reached it and ripped it out of there at the last second. It actually looked like Marvin Kinsey's forward momentum was stopped and then he had a second surge that I don't think actually helped him out. That's when Colorado State was able to rip that football out. Well, this is a huge call early in our second half. Rams trailing by three. In rivalry games, or any game for that matter, it's plays like that. You know, where you come out to set the tone in the second half. Well, this isn't the tone that Colorado State wanted to set. And Mel Tucker's defense, coordinated by Tyson Summers, comes out and potentially gets a huge takeaway to start this second half. And that's one of the things that Mel Tucker talked to us about, that defense is about taking the football away and even scoring points. And this might be the second takeaway for them tonight. It is an extended review, which is interesting, but I'm not convinced there's enough there to overturn the original call. Replay official After tonight, review, Judson Howard. The ruling on the field is confirmed. First down, Colorado. So Colorado State was still fighting for yards, and that ball ended up being exposed to Colorado's defense, and huge play to start this second half. And we'll see if the turnover row makes another appearance. Mike Bobo pleading his case to no avail. Well, I was somewhat disappointed in the turnover over in the first half. We saw the row, but we saw no sign of boxing gloves or a punching bag. Players have been rehearsing their routine if they get a turnover, and Mike Bobo is still pleading his case. But this has been reviewed, and this has been confirmed. Someone needs to close the book on this and start the game again. Here we go. Fontenot, the running back for CU. Delayed handoff inside zone and pummeled down after a gain of one by Ellison Hubbard is spotted up. And Ellison Hubbard has had himself a nice game. He's active at that defensive tackle position. 6'1", 285 pounds, slightly undersized, but he's been disrupted. He's been getting off of blocks and making plays just like that one there. Montez keeps it with real estate, makes a cut, and slides in safely short of the five. It'll be first down and goal. That was a designed run. You could tell that because Montez had a personal escort outside and Brady Russell, the tight end, leading him around the edge. Well designed and not defended that well by Colorado State. After a gain of 19, right up the middle for the touchdown, Alex Fontenot. Roy, this is what Mel Tucker hopes becomes the identity of his program. Getting takeaways is only half the battle. It's points off of takeaways that matter, whether the defense actually scores, or in this case, an offense uses the short field to their advantage and scores themselves. And a great start for the Colorado Buffaloes to begin our second half. Extra point is good. Buffs lead it by 10. The fumble by Marvin Kenji sets up another CU score. And the Buffalo defense standing tall to start our third quarter. Fontenot off and running the sophomore from Richmond, Texas. This season for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Here in the Mile High City, Colorado, back in front of CSU, 31-21, just underway in our third quarter. Kelly Stoffer, Lauren Sisler, Roy Philpott. The Rocky Mountain Showdown has lived up to the hype so far tonight. And by the way, we're just getting things started this weekend for college football. We got some big games headed your way tomorrow. 
Sunday and Monday as well. Also, don't forget about top rank boxing. The top pound for pound fighter in the world, Vasily Lomachenko, puts his belt on the line against Luke Campbell. This 12 round unification bout is headed your way on ESPN Plus in English and also in Spanish at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific. To order the main card, go to ESPNPlus.com slash top rank. And literally, Kelly Stopper, pound for pound, according to ESPN.com, the top ranked boxer on the planet. A lot at stake this weekend, as always. It's going to be fun. Yeah, I've, I've seen him box before. Technician. He would actually use the robe and the boxing gloves and the speed bag that we haven't seen yet tonight, even though Colorado's had two turnovers. Play action. Trying to set up the middle screen, that one going nowhere. So CSU Kelly facing its first true adversity of the season. And let's see how they respond. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what Mike Bobo wants to see. That's what didn't happen last year is responding to adversity. So this whole offseason was about Mike Bobo's response to adversity for the last several months in terms of his health. And then he's transposed that onto his team. And now's the time for that to show up. After the incomplete pass, play action for Hill. Sails that pass wide. It'll be third down. Two big turnovers for the Rams have led to Colorado cashing in in a big way. Ten points offset turnovers. Yeah, that's the difference in the game. Colorado leads by those ten points. The interception by Colin Hill wasn't a horrific one, but that fumble by Kinsey was on first play of this second half, and that's the big one that looms out there right now. Big play right here. The Rams need 10. Clean pocket. Hill, pump fakes, into the flats. Nifty move far side. First down, CSU. Marvin Kinsey, a little shake, a little bait. And Kinsey making up for that ball he put on the ground. And this is what hungry looks like. Mike Bobo told us that he's hungry. He had a great freshman year in ACL. He doesn't lack confidence. He has decent speed. But there was a little shimmy and shake right there. But it's the hunger to go get the line to gain. And Marvin Kinsey did on that play. Enormous conversion for Colorado State. Right in motion, and it's only a matter of time until 22 gets it again. Hill down the field, wide open. And Jackson watches that ball fall incomplete. That should have been six. Yeah, this isn't a pass that you want to make a perfect throw on. You want to drop this in somewhere where your 6'6 receiver can get it. It was a good read. The fullback Princess was in the flat, and then Warren Jackson was the second level receiver to the corner. A receiver that wide open, you have to give him a chance to catch the football. Well designed and just a big missed opportunity by Colin Hill. Thomas checks in in the backfield. An over left tackle, he'll rumble his way for a gain of three. But Roy on that third and 10, and that play by Marvin, Kinsey, where he broke a tackle and got the line to gain and has extended this drive. Even though we have another third down currently to watch, circle that play. Because if Colorado State can get back in it with a decent drive right here, that's going to mean a tie. Rams need seven. Yeah, this is another timeout. This doesn't look good from the get go. Bobo let him play. Hill with time. Fires a missile. Incomplete. Nearly picked off. And they're going to give him the interception. Mikhail Onu, the transfer from SMU, has been a playmaker tonight. Colin Hill forced this one into Warren Jackson, but we Onu makes it another spectacular play. Remember, the interception in the first half. Really good coverage by Slim Abrams, but does a new finish the play? Remember the guidelines. It's about firm control with your hand or arm, and then it's maintaining as you go to the ground. You have to get a foot down 
and then the time is maintaining it to make a football common or play common to the game. And Abrams, that's maybe even more spectacular than his interception in the first half. Here comes the robe. There is the punching bag. Oh, there bag. we go. That's what we wanted. Let's go, Kelly Yeah, Stopper. there we go. Let's go. Bovachenko knows how to do that right there. We didn't see the punching bag in that first half with Boxing Club. Did we, did we miss something? I didn't see it. How about the impact of the SMU transfer? Colorado in business with outstanding field position. And Montez was pressured. Nowhere to go with that pass as it falls incomplete. This was just going to be a screen Number off eight the was right in the area. to Fontenot, believing that Colorado State was going to come after the quarterback. Well defended outside. The running back Fontenot didn't appear to his quarterback because it was well covered by Colorado State defensively. Pressure by Jackson, second down and 10. Chenault, bottom of your screen. Two in black and gold. No hand it off. Font it up. And that'll bring it to third down. And Roy, on this third down right here to try to get points off the turnover, you would think offensive coordinator Jay Johnson is going to dial up that list that has Visca Chenault's name on it. We haven't really seen a lot of manufactured stuff. You know, there are things that you can do by moving the receiver. We saw the sweeps that the Colorado State has used with Dante Wright. Well, Colorado needs to dial up some of that and make sure their playmaker gets the football. Chenault is in the slot to the top right now. Rams drop back in coverage. Montez with time. And Nixon was running open for a brief moment. Montez fires that pass out of bounds. Ajayi in coverage. Poor decision by Montez. He had an offensive lineman out in front of him. Man-to-man -man coverage. Colorado State had bailed out of there covering people. He could have ran that for a first down with the escort by one of his offensive linemen. When he gets outside, watch the room. A big lineman is working to get out there. The effort for a lineman to lead their quarterback, and then he airmails one deep. So here's Kenny, the senior from Fort Collins, punting for the Buffs. Dante Wright retreats. No fair catch. Waiting for the convoy. And a nifty return sent out at the 21. After a punt of 48, CSU takes over, trailing 31-21. 10.46 remaining here in the third. The college football playoff lives on ESPN. Back in the Mile High City, CSU led by head coach Mike Bobo at his year five. And last year, Kelly, things really started to change in preseason camp. They end the season at three and nine, but Coach Bobo dealing with an immune disorder that attacked his lower body. There was numbness in really all of his extremities. He missed 10 days of preseason camp. And hey, look, he took the Rams to a bowl game in his first three seasons. Last year was a bit of an anomaly, provided the Rams go bowling again this year. And it's been a revival of sorts, at least in the first half in this great Rocky Mountain showdown rivalry. Off play action, here's Hill. Wide open, far side, and an empty move. That'll move the chains. E.J. Scott, first catch of the night. That's a gain of 11. And Roy, what you were talking about, it was a, it was literally a revival for Mike Bobo. It was a chance to use something that he, you know, he dealt with health-wise. He said, after I got past the woe is me stage, it was about really a, a, a spiritual revival, emotional revival, reconnecting to the things that actually matter in life. And his team sensed it, which is a very important thing. Kenzie. Crushed at the 35, he'll gain five with progress ahead to the 36. Van Dees got there first. 
So that January 26th meeting where he steps into his team and said, accountability starts with me. He turned down the $1,000 bonus or $100,000 bonus. And he told his team, I'm back. I'm going to mentor you. I'm going to lead you. It starts with me. And his team has responded. This team was in a completely different place when we talked to them over the last couple of days. Yeah, Colin Hill really echoed those sentiments to us just yesterday. It's a night and day difference compared to this time a year ago as Christian Hunter carries the football for the first time in his career for a nice game. It'll be third down and short. And Mike got emotional in our meeting. You know, the reconnection with his father. Father, You know, there was a there was something that happened in him spiritually, and he connected with his dad. He even quoted scripture to us, the book of James, trials and tribulations. I mean, that's how deep and layered this goes. His dad was a, a dad that was also a hard coach and coached his son and realized at this point in time in life, maybe I didn't love him the way I should have. All of that came out of this story. It's a great story. Play action, Hill, pass is caught, Prentice the grab into plus territory. Onu makes the stop, and Lauren, it was emotional yesterday talking with Mike. Yeah, he's an emotional guy, and coming out of the locker room, he said that he was feeling really good about where they were, even though they were trailing. He said he asked the guys in the locker room, he said, are you guys having fun? That's the most important thing. And he, the guys responded with a heck yes, we're having fun. And he said, they just got to come out here and continue to fight. And I think that's what the mentality behind this football team has been in the entire offseason, the accountability coming out here. And they, they, the, the players said they feel like a weight has been lifted off their shoulders because Mike Bobo is in good health. And they feel like this program has really taken a turn for the better. Jackson bolts ahead, a gain of 11. The drive continues. It'll be first and 10 for the Rams. And we know that Mike Bobo is a, is a gifted play caller. That's his reputation. But he lost contact with, he said, the most important thing in this business, which is my team. His team kind of lost their way. They didn't know how to fight through adversity. This drive really represents the first time they've had to do that. And this drive looks like they got the message loud and clear from their head coach, Mike Bobo. Here's Hill, the pump fake. Fires a strike, caught. And a gain of nine on first down, the first grab by Nico Hall. Nico Hall was running a curl route outside, 10 yards and show your numbers to the quarterback. He actually slipped down. The protection by this unproven offensive line was so good that Colin Hill literally could wait for Hall to get up and then put it on his numbers. Halfway through our third quarter. Jackson in motion. Hunter, the running back for the Rams. Second career carry. And that results in a first down. A quick burst through the left side. Christian Hunter, one of those true freshmen you talked about, getting his first carry earlier on this drive. And Mike Bobo said he has really quick feet, this Christian Hunter, but it's the vision. And vision was needed on that play. There wasn't a whole lot of softness, and you had to find some off to the left, and Hunter did that and was able to convert and move the sticks. Hunter remains on the field. On the cutback. Plowed down short of the 20. This rivalry started back in 1893. And you can feel it walking in tonight. There is no love loss between these two programs. Yeah, we can't repeat some of the things that the cheering sections were saying during the weather delays that, that we had. But it wasn't pretty. But that's the intensity of it. And both of these teams need the same thing. They need a good performance here tonight in this rivalry game, and they need some momentum going into the season. Neither one of these teams have, have, have won a football game for 11 months. Snap over the head of Hill. Quickly corralled, but a massive loss of yards. Kenzie hopped on it just short of his own 40-yard line. And this was hot from the center, Scott Brooks. The first real bad snap tonight. And Colin Hill's a 6'5 athlete, so that was hot, and it was off to the right, and it brings up a, a third and 20. And you don't necessarily have to convert, but what you would like to do 
is get into field goal range. So you probably need to pick up a good close to 10 yards in order to make that happen. Quick toss, Dante Wright. They'll get that yardage back and then some. Brought down at the 24 by Onu. That'll bring up fourth down and Max Paduska, the field goal kicker, trots onto the field. That was quality situational football, third and 20. What you're telling yourself, especially as a quarterback and a play caller, at the very least, we need to get three on the board. So where do we have to get the football in order to make that a high probability? And it was given to our best playmaker tonight, Dante Wright, and see what he can get done. 42-yard field goal on the way. And it is good. Paduska, clutch. His first field goal is true. And a brand new ball game here in Denver, 31-24, a one possession contest here inside Bronco Stadium. Coca-Cola invites you to share a Coke while tuning into this upcoming matchup. Tomorrow, it's 11th ranked Oregon taking on number 16 Auburn. That's Saturday, 7.30 over on ABC. Back in the Mile High City, the Rocky Mountain Showdown continues. 31-24, Colorado leading arch rival CSU. Kelly Stopper, Roy Philpott, Lauren Sisler with you tonight. Downtown Denver has come to life once again. Braxton Davis sends this one short. Nixon from the two. With a lay. Good field position for the Buffs at their own 32. Well, we told you about Mike Bobo. How about Mel Tucker, year one, after an incredible career spanning multiple programs across the country. LSU, Alabama, Georgia, stints in the NFL. Tucker's resume, Kelly, very impressive. Impressive, and I don't know if you've ever met the man before yesterday, but I haven't. And I'm a fan, to be perfectly honest with you. I think, first of all, Colorado needs to win, but Mel Tucker is a star in the making, and bringing an SEC mentality to the Pac-12 could be good for everybody. Eight in the box for CSU. Chenault on the jet sweep and a nifty run. Yields six yards. And that was actually one of the first times we've really seen a guaranteed touch for number two. Last year, he did a ton of that. Tremendous playmaking ability. I guarantee my superstar can touch the football if I give it to him in a fly sweep motion. We haven't seen that much out of Jay Johnson, the offensive coordinator for Colorado here tonight. I anticipate more of that on this drive. Mangum, the freshman, stood up. Short of first down yardage. It'll be third down and one. Mel Tucker trying to bring the SEC mentality to the Pac-12, and he said, you know what? A lot of people think of the Pac-12 as a tennis shoe league. Yeah. We've got to change that mentality and that mindset. Well, he's chief among them as we see an important third down and short right here. Colorado wants to possess the football, but this is where that toughness that Mel Tucker has been preaching since he took over the job has to show up. He's got to get lathered up on his offensive line of scrimmage and push Colorado State to convert right here. Buffs need a yard. Montez straight ahead. And he'll pick up three, four, still running close to midfield. Finally stopped at the 49. 6'5", 230, you can get your own push. But that was a good surge by one of the question marks on Colorado's team, their offensive line of scrimmage. They have a couple of newbies up there in a transfer, and they haven't gelled together yet. But that was a tremendous push by that unit up front. Mangum, far side. Quickly bottled up, leading the charge. Toby McBride, who's now healthy and becoming a major factor for this CSU Ram front four. Roy, you were talking about Mel Tucker and his influence in this conference. He's not bashful. He's an engaging personality. 
And he's going to bring an offensive, or excuse me, a defensive mentality that I think could be pervasive in this conference in a short amount of time. Mangum straight ahead into plus territory. It'll be third down and a long three. Logan Stewart with the tackle, and here comes Tempo. Montez, flush, straight ahead. It'll be fourth down and two. Jamal Hicks, a nice grab. I like the way my offensive line is playing. If I'm Jay Johnson, the play caller for Colorado, I think you leave him out there and try to convert right here and possess the football. I know it's only a one possession game. It's a rivalry game. You have to win games like this on plays like this right here. Hicks appeared to be banged up. Where is number two, LaVisca Chenault? Just because it's fourth and two doesn't mean it's going to be a run. Big play here. Chenault gets it. Jet sweep action. First down, Colorado. The game's not that hard. If I need a play, where's my chief playmaker and guarantee him a touch? And this is the way that they can do it on that one. More tempo for the Bobs. Montez surveys, floats one down the field. Dangerous pass, and it's caught. Tony Brown. And there are three flags on the field after a gain of 24. Boy, well, Ellison Hubbard came bearing down quickly on Montez. Yeah, the officials pretty much have this one surrounded. If you look at the placement of all the flags, I don't know that it can possibly be the same penalty. I think we might have three different things out there. There are two fouls on the defense. Illegal substitution, 12 players in formation, defense. That penalty is declined. Offside defense. That penalty is also declined. The result of the play is a first down. And the tempo has caught Colorado State's defense unawares a couple of different times. And that first touchdown pass by Colorado, it was an up tempo, and the safety Jamal Hill Hicks wasn't lined up properly. And that time you saw in the circle that Colorado State had the 12th guy trying to get off the field. Tailback is Fontenot on first down. There's a lane. There he goes. Fontenot to the end zone for the touchdown. His second of the night and Alex Fontenot, the sophomore has been awfully impressive this evening in downtown Denver. That's why you go for it on fourth and two, is you can throw a haymaker, at the very least a gut punch by finishing the drive like this. We will extend the field for the extra the big point. play guy. But he takes it in, breaking a tackle on that one. Colorado State looked a little bit tired defensively on that drive. They're not the deepest team on the planet, and it showed on that series right there. Stefano's extra point on the way. On the final play of the third quarter, Colorado builds its largest lead of this Rocky Mountain showdown, and it's the second score of the night for number eight in black and gold. Alex Fontano getting the job done for CU. Our final 15 minutes headed your way in downtown Denver, 38 to 24. Colorado leading Colorado State. Kelly Stopper, Roy Philpott, Lauren Sisler. Here at Broncos Stadium at Mile High, what a game this has been. And the Buffs in year one in game one under Mel Tucker's direction have looked pretty good. Yeah, the offense under Mel Tucker with Jay Johnson calling the plays. 
has looked really good. At times, Mel Tucker's defense, called by defensive coordinator Tyson Summers, have given some things up. But I think that's more about how well Colorado State has executed on the offensive side. This has really been a well-played game all the way around for the most part. Stefano will kick things off for the Buffs. And seven yards deep, it'll be first and ten for CSU. Don't forget, coming up Labor Day night, we'll have Brian Kelly and number nine Notre Dame tangling with Louisville in Scott Satterfield's debut as the Cardinals head coach. Eight Eastern, five Pacific from Cardinal Stadium on ESPN and also the ESPN app. You think Notre Dame is a playoff team again? They have a lot of people coming back, but I don't know that they have the right parts coming back. I see a loss at Georgia. That could be an issue, but 11-1 Notre Dame probably looks pretty attractive to the committee given the rest of the schedule the Irish will face this season. At Georgia, to me, we've talked a lot about the dogs tonight, is the team a lot of people in college football have circled to say that maybe this is going to be their year. Hill off play action, loops it down the field, trying to spot right, and is picked off. There were two receivers in the area. Makai Blackman came up with it, and there is a flag on the field as well. Yeah, Blackman is actually going to get called for pass interference. When the Colorado State receiver tried to go up and high point this ball, he got a two-handed shove in the back by Blackman, and the official immediately threw the flag. Pass interference, number 25, defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. That's an automatic first down. Well, Colin Hill was also drilled after releasing the football. And he appears to be okay after sustaining a significant shot as we take another look. And what would be looked at by the replay booth potentially as we're getting word that that was looked at would be potentially the late hit with targeting, which can be initiated by the replay booth. Terrence Lang, no targeting after a quick review. There's Jackson. Rumbles his way to the 30-yard line. It's the first time we've seen that. The play action pass invites Nate Landman, the middle linebacker, up, and that's exactly the vacated space that Warren Jackson gets into, and Colin Hill threw a rope to it. First time tonight the Rams have used tempo. Hill fires a pass that sails wide of Trey McBride. You're right. And Mike Bobo hasn't used tempo a lot. He talked about being more controlled, a controlled attack, just like we're seeing right here, more huddle up. But it's, it's tempo when you think you have an advantage. And after that big play, there's a little bit of chaos. It's almost like throwing a big play, having a splash, splash play offensively. You hurry up and call another play while you think the defense is reeling a little bit. On second down, Kenzie makes a man miss. And another, and that's a first down for CSU. A gain of 11 in the Rams in business. Mike Bubble told us that Marvin Kinsey is a hungry player. This is what hunger looks like on the football field. He wouldn't be denied until he had the line to gain and set his offense up for a really important opportunity to score some points. He's a senior. He's played in 34 games all off the bench. He's coming alive tonight despite that one fumble. From the 20, Kenzie bursts ahead inside the 15. Kenzie doesn't seem to be running low on gas either. Mike Bobo is riding that hot hand. A very good feel in the run game. Runs really well in traffic, finds softness. He's an efficient runner, and he's a hungry runner. We've already talked about that. Scott goes in motion. Single back. Kenzie gets it. This time, sent down after a gain of one by Nate Landman. One of the team captains for the Buffs tonight. He's had an impressive preseason camp. His best ball is still well ahead of him. He's only a junior. An important third down, to say the least. I don't believe that Colorado State can get this deep. 
and afford to not get a touchdown. So with this third and roughly three, a lot of things on the table. You can run it, you can pass it, but if they run it and don't get it, Bobo might go for it on four down. It's got that feel to it, Kelly. Two tight ends on the field. Hill looking for Kenzie across the middle. Butler's wide open for the touchdown. The 13-yard scoring strike, and the Rams are right back at it. We actually saw this exact same design in the first half. Crossing routes, and one of the crossers is Cam Butler. And it's essentially a rough play offensively against man-to-man -man coverage. And the big tight end who's been there, done that. He's a great option route runner and a very good crosser as a tight end also. Huge drive for Colorado State. A pair of standouts from South Carolina, Colin Hill to Cameron Butler. Here in the Rocky Mountain Showdown, 1,800 miles from home. They don't care in CSU still with a chance. Back in downtown Denver, what a performance, what a night for the redshirt junior, Colin Hill, 38 to 31. Kelly and Hill has already gone over 300 yards through the air. He's thrown three touchdowns. He's managed this game quite nicely for head coach Mike Bobo. Yeah, he really has. And some of that effective run game is because Colin Hill is getting into the right stuff at the line of scrimmage, but very efficient. 22 out of 30 passes, and you talked about it, over 300 yards and three big plays in terms of touchdowns. And he will have to do that more in the next 12 minutes and 13 seconds if Colorado State is going to pull this one out. Over 800 yards of total offense. 69 points on the board so far. And we're just getting started this weekend. Oregon and Auburn headed your way tomorrow night from down the Metroplex, AT&T Stadium in Arlington, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, a chance to see Justin Herbert, who could be the number one overall pick in the draft next summer. He's thrown a touchdown pass in about 75 straight games. And I'll tell you what, playing behind that offensive line, he's got a <laughs> I chance. I was going to get to that. He's got a chance. Yeah, Justin Herbert has amazing, amazing skill set. But he also has five returning offensive linemen, which will be a terrific matchup against Auburn's defensive front that a lot of people call the best defensive front in the land. Big game for the Pac-12, as is this one. Montez brought down behind the line. A flag on the field at the 23. I think it's a holding on 58. Carly Cooch is the left guard. Holding number 58 offense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Still first down. And that was certainly the point of attack. And Cooch just gets caught grabbing a hold of Jersey. And that's the result of much more aggression out of the defensive line for Colorado State. That was one of our keys. Colorado State's defensive line was not exactly disruptive last season, and you've seen that in buckets much more consistently here tonight. Under 12 to play. Here in Denver. Fontenot. He'll gain four. Jalen Bates, the transfer from Arizona State with the hit. You know, first down penalty, Roy, so often is a drive killer. But the defense has to play well and not allow CU to build themselves out. Second and 15 needs to lead to a passing down, and then you defend it and get off the field. That's typically how the defense funnels an offense down to a punt. On second down, Montez off the back foot. Nixon's got it. Ahead to the 40-yard line. That'll move the chains. Twin corner concepts on both sides, and Montez did a great job of going to the left where he had Katie Nixon running the corner route. And that's a touchy pass. You have to get it there before that safety comes over and blows it up and or intercepts it. You have to kind of drive it but there's some traffic underneath it as well. That was well done by Montez, and great job of KD Nixon hanging on to him. After a gain of 20. 
First down, Colorado. Montez wants it all. There's Chenault. And it looked like he may have lost the football in the lights. He pulled up near the 15. And this was a run look, two tight ends, and then it was a stutter go outside by Chenault. And Chenault just didn't look like he picked it up like, like you just talked about. And that ball was actually pretty well thrown, and the gifted receiver looked like he gave up on it because I think he didn't see it in the lights here at Bronco Stadium. Brown comes to life once again. Play action across the middle. Caught, first down, CU. Dimitri Stanley, his first catch as a Colorado Buffalo, and that results in 15 yards and a first down. Well done by Stanley, for sure, catching the ball in traffic, and Stephen Montez trusted Stanley in that traffic. It was well covered by Colorado State, but the ball's only so wide. If you trust your receiver, you can throw it in that window, and that was a tight one. Bunch formation, bottom of your screen. Chenault on the reverse. Needs a block, gets it. LaVisca Chenault tripped up near the 22-yard line. Daquan Jackson got there, but he gained 23. Great design at giving your playmaker the football. Brady Russell is going to fake like he's going to block the defensive end and then escort Chenault outside. And once again, play caller Jay Johnson going to that list that says this is how we get it to number two, and they did it on that play. Jay Johnson's had a good night, first time yeah. calling play since 2016. We'll give it to number two, and we'd all have a good night. That's true, too. It's not rocket science, it's football. Fontano, there's a lane, makes a man miss. Off to the end zone for the touchdown. His third score of the night, and with that run, he goes over the century mark. Alex Fontenot isn't supposed to be the physical back that breaks tackles, but that was a purpose run right there. There was some violence in that. And you can see that Colorado State defense, their tackling in this quarter has gone downhill dramatically, highlighted by that play right there. The Puffs back in front by two scores. 45-31, 9-16 to go here in Denver. And how about Fontenot? 112 yards on the ground, three touchdowns as well. And the Buffs starting to smell it. What a night for the sophomore out of Richmond, Texas, Alex Fontenot. Seven yards per touch tonight, Kelly. And he's been up the middle. He's gotten to the edge. He's shown home run ability, which is what we heard a lot from Mel Tucker this week and offensive play caller Jay Johnson. He brings it to the table. He's been impressive. It, remember when Jay Johnson talked to us yesterday about, you know, everyone says, well, maybe you need to be balanced. An offensive play caller needs to be balanced. Well, they've completely and perfectly balanced it. 446 yards, evenly balanced between rush, rundowns, and pass, but it isn't typical. Balance is kind of feeding the player that's getting it done. So there's been a little bit of Chenault, and there's been a lot of Fontenot making plays and breaking tackles. Fontenot a year ago rushed for 43 yards the entire season. Oh, what a start in his second campaign now in Boulder. Big possession for the Rams trailing by 14 once again. Colin Hill responded quite nicely the last time on the field. Let's see if he can do it again. Yeah, and Colin Hill has played well. He's waited for this opportunity for a long time. I think Mike Bobo has had a tremendous night at calling plays. But you're right, down by two scores, this drive is certainly vital right here. From the 25, Kenzie is the running back. 
And still plenty of time to work with for the Rams. The swing pass. And Kenzie will gain six on first down. And that's a high percentage play on first down. Even though you're throwing it, you're throwing it behind the line to a back, and the receivers outside to that side are already engaged in their blocks because that reception occurred behind the line. So it's a very safe throw. Hill protected nicely. Dangerous toss incomplete. Derek Abrams in coverage. Lauren. Yeah, this Colorado State team is not backing down. They have so much fight. After that Colorado State field goal, Mike Bobo ran over to the offensive line. He said to them, I love this team. You are playing your butts off. He used another word, but we'll use butts in this one. He said, keep fighting. I love this team. And that's just been the mentality and the goal of this team all night long. And you can see it out there. 8.40 left on the clock, and they're not giving up. What word did he use that one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Third and four. Off the pump fake. Hill corralled, spun around. And drifting out of bounds. Pass will be incomplete. Let's see if they ruled him out at the 20. And I think they will. That's a sack. Terrence Lane got there. Quarterback was ruled out of bounds. From and that's where you maybe line. see a, point a little bit of the rustiness of being in moments like that. You don't want to take a sack. Even though Colin Hill extended the play, the things that were going to happen at that point were all bad for Colorado State. Throw the ball away earlier and don't give up the yards that he did by getting sacked out of bounds. Well, you were in the top 10 of the 87 draft as a quarterback. You were telling me earlier today that's one of the hardest things to learn, to throw the football away and live to see another down. Nixon on the return, and there's a late penalty flag after a 59-yard punt. That flag came from the line judge, who literally was about 30 yards away. And that was a fairly good arm talent on the toss of that flag. Yes, it was. That didn't appear to be a late hit out of bounds. I wonder if this is a block in the back. During the return, personal foul, blindside block, number 14 receiving team. Half the distance to the goal line, first down. And remember that blindside block is to protect the defenseless, and we'll talk about it after the break. Number 14 in black and gold was the guilty party for the blindside block, which has really been a point of emphasis this offseason for college football officials. Not a ton of contact there, Kelly. And, and the key, Roy, is you have to attack with forcible contact. And I just don't know that there was any forcible contact. There was a little bit of attacking going on, but the forcible contact part, I don't think really happened. I question that call. Russell in motion. Montez hands it off. Fontenot's had the hot hand, and that'll continue. On first down, he'll gain 13. And the problem for Colorado State defensively has been the cutback. And Fontenot has the ability to get back. Remember, the point of attack here is more up the middle or to the left side. Fontenot has the vision and the speed to take advantage of an open door away from the point of, a, of attack. And we've seen that multiple times out of Fontenot tonight. Our extended conversation with offensive play caller Jay Johnson, he used the word talented about 78 times and talking about a couple of key players and Fontenot was the one he kept coming back to. He said he's got home run ability, but what he really loved, he's improved his pass protection. And for running backs playing in any conference in college football, it's vital to have that. You gotta be able to protect your quarterback and you see the yards on the ground tonight. Fontenot, 43 last year. I can't believe that based on the way he's performed here tonight. But it's the good vision, too, that we saw in that last play. Yeah. To get back to the open door on the back side. On second down, Montez across the middle. Quick pitch and catch. 
Tony Brown, another grab. Close to first down yardage. But you talked about the pass protection. That's why young running backs like Manga, who is a big physical guy, we've seen him in the game. He's a true freshman. He hasn't learned how to protect the quarterback yet. That part of the game will come. You can always teach young running backs to run that direction. Point of attack is right there. This is your look. Stay at your target. And you get the run ability, but you need to protect the passer as well, and Fontenot can do that. Third down and a yard to go. Rams will load up the box, and here comes a timeout. First charge timeout, Colorado. Buffs have two remaining. Timeout on the field. Well, don't forget, coming up next, Sports Center from Los Angeles with Linda Cohn, Stan Barrett. They'll have Kirk Herbstreit's interview with Tua Tunga Bailoa. Matthew Barry's favorite fantasy player, Sports Center, coming up here on ESPN, the ESPN app. And if that wasn't enough, Ice Cube in studio with an outrageous Raiders prediction. Anytime I toss it to Ice Cube, you know that today is a good day, my it friend. It's a good night, isn't it? It is. Can't wait to see it. Fontenot on third down is going to lose a yard and a big stop for the Rams defense. Yeah, that play right there, if Colorado converts, might be the game. Up to touchdowns, and what a great effort once again by Colorado State defensively. Something they didn't have a, nearly enough of last year, and once again, Mike Bobo's team is not giving up. And remember, Dante Wright is back to field this punt. He's been the best playmaker on the field this side of LaVisca Chenault, so keep your eyes open. Kenny spins it beautifully. Wright retreats all the way inside the five. Here comes the speedster. Nowhere to run. He's brought down at the eight-yard line, and how about the play of Colorado's special teams tonight? That's a punt of 61 yards off the foot of Alex Kinney. Yeah, Alex Kinney hit a bomb. You love to see the tight spiral and it turns over in the air and it was a great catch by Dante Wright to just catch up with it, but he had nowhere to go. We'll set the situation, 5.09 remaining, CSU trailing by two scores. Rams have all three timeouts to work with, but Kelly, there has to be a sense of urgency on this possession, obviously. Thomas, the running back. Hill to the air. And Nico Hall makes his second reception. And you, did, nine. you definitely treat this just like a two-minute situation. You need two scores. So there's almost five minutes left, so you almost have two two-minute drives. This touchdown, if they can get one, and then probably an onside kick. You know Mike Bobo would love to save the timeouts. Confusion on the deep ball. Abrams in coverage, nothing doing on that play. So Hill takes a shot on second and short, third down and one upcoming. Thomas straight ahead. And they're going to back him up five. Yeah, Nico Hall was off the ball outside. Ball start, 80 offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. Nico Hall was a wide receiver over by Mike Bobo. Mike Bobo was waving him up to get on the line of scrimmage, or it would have been an illegal formation. And about the time he moved, Colin Hill snapped the football. And so he was moving as it was snapped. So multiple infractions potentially by Nico Hall right there. Thomas on third down will gain three, maybe four. It'll bring up fourth down, and right now Mike Bobo's got to go for it. I think you're exactly right. I think that's what that play was about. It was trying to get to, if we don't convert, get in fourth, and a run pass option, whichever we want to do in a mix down. And fourth and two is exactly that. But this is for the game right here. 
Rams need two yards to keep the drive alive. And a timeout called by CU. Second charge timeout, Colorado. Well, certainly a much more competitive game than what we saw a year ago. 45-13 as the buff steamrolled CSU. And for both of these teams, you know, a lot of people forget, Kelly, Colorado last year got out to a 5-0 start, yeah. was ranked in the top 20 before the wheels came off. And in fact, their last win was way back in early October after they lost seven in a row, which or before they lost seven in a row. So a lot has changed since then. And a win tonight would certainly feel good. Yeah, Colorado invented ways to lose games last year. LaVisca Chenault got hurt during that time as well. But there were opportunities to win games, and they just found every way in the world to lose. And that's what Mel Tucker is trying to turn around, and that's why he's here and the coaching staff previously is not. Fourth and two. Pressure off the edge. Hill's going to be sacked. Ball comes out. Touchdown, Colorado. Mustafa Johnson collected it and quickly rumbled into the end zone. The first team all Pac-12 performer. The icing on the cake tonight. Well, Tyson Sum Summers, the defensive coordinator, was coming after Colin Hill. And Marvin Kinsey had protection to the backside of the quarterback. And I think he's the one that whipped on the linebacker that was coming on the edge. on what could prove to be the clinching play in this Rocky Mountain showdown. The Buffs have poured on 52 points tonight. Their largest lead of the evening. Jonathan Van Deese coming off the edge, forced the fumble, and Johnson with a touchdown. Well, Marvin Kinsey had protection to that side, and I believe it was Van Deese that number five, the running back, was supposed to pick up. Van Deese is going to come off the edge, the backside, the blind side of Colin Hill. The running back releases, and the running back should have been up in the face mask of number 31, Jonathan Van Deese. Just a blown assignment. The quarterback right there, Roy, believes he's protected on the backside. He's done his homework, Colin Hill has. He's counted the numbers. He believes his running back is to his backside, picking Van Deest up. And the first time you know it doesn't happen is we see the, the boxing gloves out again. The first time the quarterback knows that his running back didn't get the job done, he feels the face mask in his spine. And that's what happened right there on that play. You think about Mel Tucker, you think about defense. Strong play in the secondary, his background. His team has forced four turnovers tonight. And they've cashed those turnovers in for points. And that really, Kelly, when you think about it, has been the difference in this one. Yeah, no question. One team has played relatively clean, and one team, Colorado State, has not. And that truly is the difference in this game. Rams will take over, trailing by 21, as we check in once again with Lauren Sisler. Hey guys, look, I think we did Mel Tucker a huge favor by waiting till now, just four minutes left in the fourth quarter to let everybody know what his nickname is. His nickname being Rock, and it's not what you think it is, and he was a little, uh, he was, uh, he, he didn't really want to give us the origin of that right away, guys, but uh, it started back when he was born. His mom put the birth cap on him, and she looked at him and she named him Rocky after Rocky the Flying Squirrel because of those chubby cheeks. And the name stuck, by the way. <laughs> I'll bet it did. He was called Rocky. He changed it really to Rock as he started to grow up and actually got a tattooed on his right shoulder. But it's kind of convenient that he was nicknamed Rocky. It moved to Rock, and now he's maintained that nickname, unbeknownst to his own team. And he said, you can't tell that story because if my guys find out about it, I'm never going to hear the end of it. Well, he mentioned that. He kind of in passing said something about rock, and I'm like, well, hold on a second. What, what does that mean? Well, that's my nickname. Well, where does it come from? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I said, well, we plan on talking to your dad and maybe a brother or two tomorrow at the game. 
So we're going to find out anyway. So he came clean with it, and it was a doozy. And yeah. his players will now know as they watch, listen to this game back. Yeah, so now when you see that tattoo there on, I think it was his right shoulder. He's got the rock tattoo on the shoulder. You know, I, I was trying to guess what he was going to tell us because he kind of gave us the darts when I said, are you going to tell us what your nickname is? He said, no way, I'm not telling you. And I said, you can't leave us hanging like that. And, of course, Kelly, you grilled him a little bit. And you said, look, you got to tell us that nickname. We can be the first to report it. And here we are, first to report Rock. Good old Rocky the Flying Squirrel. Well, at least he didn't get Rocky the Flying Squirrel tattooed on his arm. <laughs> that would have been a story. But how about Mom? How about Mom with this newborn? You put that cap on and you give him a nickname for the rest of his life. In grade school, he didn't even know what his name was. The teacher called out for Mel Tucker, and he didn't raise his hand because in his family, nobody calls him anything but Rock. Uh, it's certainly going to be a successful debut for Mel Tucker. And there's a look at Dad, Mel Tucker Sr. He's in the Toledo Hall of Fame, football and baseball. It's got to be a special feeling. He's waited a long time to see his son be able to be a head coach, taking over a program on a full-time basis. There was the interim stop in the NFL, didn't last long. Now at Colorado, this program has the ability really become a sleeping giant in the Pac-12. Pocket collapses. There goes Colin Hill. And he'll slide in safely at the 30. Well, you talked about the sleeping giant. That's something that he said he got from, from Alvarez in Wisconsin, his head coach. That's where Mel Tucker played ball. And Barry Alvarez referred to Wisconsin at that time. They haven't won anything. And he said, we're a sleeping giant. And before Mel Tucker left, they were beating people up. Which, oh, by the way, was the only other time before he took this job that Mel Tucker has been to Boulder, Colorado, is when Wisconsin came here to play. He took the job before coming back. He just viewed the facilities and all those things online, agreed to terms to some extent, and then came here after it was basically said and done. And I think you're exactly right. Mel Tucker bringing the SEC mentality, and people get tired of hearing that, to the Pac-12, that could be transformative. Rocky the Flying Squirrel. Wonder if mom named one of the other sons Bullwinkle. <laughs> By the way, Mel, I'm sorry. They made me do it. They wanted to talk about it that long. Hill fires a pass that is incomplete. Looking for Nico Hall. Well, the winner of this game will claim the Centennial Cup. And by all accounts, Colorado in perfect position to claim the hardware here tonight. Beautiful looking trophy, and what a great rivalry this has been. And by the way, the last time it's going to be played on a neutral field here in Denver next year, it moves to Fort Collins before back to Boulder. And right now, no plans to return here to Bronco Stadium at Mile High. On second down, Hill floats it towards the end zone, incomplete. Buffs will be tested next week. Nebraska comes to town. It'll be a big red invasion. We'll see if they can build off this season opening win. Colorado State, it's a different team this year with what we've seen tonight. Coach Bobo's healthy. He's got some weapons. Hill is now experienced. He's healthy as well. Rest of the Mountain West take note of tonight. This is going to be a vastly improved squad compared to what we saw just one year ago. Third and ten. On the screen pass to Jackson. That'll bring up fourth and long. And I think you're right about Colorado State in conference. I think Colin Hill showed tonight that he's up to the challenge. I think there are a couple of playmakers, Warren Jackson being one of them. Dante Wright, the true freshman, emerged. And so game plans can be built around that little, little uh, jitterbug. He's, he's explosive. I think the offensive line performed decently tonight. Mike Bobo was all about the run game and then manipulating defenses with multiple personnel groupings. And so 
Yeah, I think offensively they played well. What you saw in deep into this second half towards the end of the third quarter is that I think Colorado State's defense ran out of gas. And there isn't a lot of depth on that side. I do believe they're more talented. But that's something to keep an eye on as they get into conference play. This was a team that was picked dead last in the Pac-12 South. If you look at their schedule, with this win in the books, the Big Red Invasion next week up at Folsom Field in Boulder. Air Force, the first time those two teams have played since the mid-1970s. All of a sudden, things become a little bit more manageable with the fifth-year senior quarterback, LaVisca Chenault, and then now some momentum. Game one, win one under your belt if you're Mel Tucker. Yeah, I think that the first win is the significant one. You have to get some momentum, and that's what the rivalry game was about tonight for me. That's what a rivalry is. Competition where you're both playing for the thing that you both need, and they both needed a win, and Colorado's going to get that, and Colorado State's going to have to go back and, and emphasize all the good things and then go on to their conference play. But I think Colorado will First pick up steam defensively. Colorado State. Offensively, you saw seconds. the weapons unleashed tonight at di different times. New quarterback for Colorado, Tyler Lytle. The sophomore out of California in a timeout on the field. Mel Tucker's season, though, is a little bit weird to me. You know that they start with essentially three rivals. This one. Nebraska comes in, Air Force lives right down the road about 60 miles. That's an odd way to start before you get into conference. If you take anything away from tonight, remember this line, and this comes from Pac-12 Media Day more than a month ago. Mel Tucker on accepting this job and talking about the conference. It's like, if you want to play real ball, play in the SEC. If you want to play in a tennis shoes league, come on out here, toss it around a little bit. They play flag football in the pack, and that ain't good. It's a different wow. vibe oh watching boy. Colorado practice and listening to this veteran coaching staff. With the majority of the staff has ties to the SEC. So Second this is going to be a real out. interesting Colorado experiment for Colorado and for this conference to see how it all unfolds. Yeah, and that quote was essentially what Mel Tucker would say when he recruited against the Pac-12 when he was in the SEC. If you want to play defense, come out here. And so now he has to reverse that. He has to be the one that plays defense. And obviously, we talked about Utah. Utah plays some defense. Kyle Winningham knows how to play defense in Utah. So there's some defenses played out here. Right there, you can see that. And this is the college football playoff era. And the Pac-12 is down there. So there was some legitimacy to what Mel Tucker said, but Mel Tucker's here to improve that. And the good news is, if you took just last season, the Pac-12 jumped the ACC in that same stack. So there was some movement in the right direction. And then the in the Pac-12 championship game, it was a 10 to 3 game. It wasn't a 48 to 31 game like it was years out. before. Colorado State. 30 Rams seconds. Rams call a timeout. 109 remaining. You mentioned Utah. The Utes, in my estimation, have one of the best defensive lines in the country. We saw that last night in Provo in a massive win in the Holy War. I don't think the score in that one was as close as it would indicate. 30 to 12, Utah really physically superior. Moss is healthy, Tyler Huntley That's remains healthy. That's enormous. Yeah. But their front four, I think, is better than Clemson's. And right there with Auburn or any other team in the country right now, and that reason alone, plus Huntley and, Ra and, and Moss, yeah. puts Utah in the playoff conversation. I completely agree. Yeah. And certainly I think it's they're the favorite in the South. Fair catch call for, made at the 31. You know, that championship no game in the Pac-12 last year, was blocked into the Utah kickoff. lost to Washington 10-3. That was without Huntley or Moss. Yeah. It was about defense, and that's who Kyle Whittingham is. He has that kind of team, but Mel Tucker appears to be headed that direction here in Boulder sooner than later as well, I would think. Next big game coming up for the Pac-12 tomorrow night, 7.30, down in Arlington, Texas, Oregon, and Auburn. Ducks rank ahead of the Tigers, but yet a slight underdog going into that one. Auburn's got a very, 
very tough defensive front as Kenzie picks up three yards. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch that one. And a new quarterback in Bo Nix. And a play caller coming home again, which is Gus Malzahn taking over as one of the most gifted play callers in, in the country and has a, a newbie at quarterback. But trust me, Bo Nix will be in good hands. And if you have the defense, especially the defensive line that Auburn has, Bo Nix has to err on the side of caution at times when he doesn't know better and turn it over to that defense that I think is going to be amazing against an offense that brings back in Oregon five offensive linemen to go with an NFL quarterback in Justin Herbert. That's going to be a really, really intriguing matchup. Third down for Colin Hill. And the swing pass low and just a bit outside. Big win for the Buffs, year one, game one. Under the watch of Mel Tucker. Rock Tucker to you and I and to Lauren. From this point, And moving to all forward. of his all of his team from this point forward, too, by the way. <laughs> we left the meeting with him yesterday, and you said something very interesting. You looked at me. You said, Mel Tucker is a superstar in the making. And that was my exact sense as well. Colorado's got the potential to do some things. They've got some pieces. Get to a bowl game in year one, that would be a nice start. I think Mel Tucker would like to do a little more than that. We will see. And all that's left to do is win. I think he personally possesses everything that's needed. Now, he hired incredibly talented coaches, experienced and gifted in their, in their different disciplines. He lets them coach. That's one thing that he learned along the way. Don't micromanage, hire good coaches, let them coach. Coach them, but let them coach the players. He's doing a great job of that so far. All things are pointing to the, in the right direction in Boulder currently. Could be the final play of the game. Hill sends this towards the end zone. And that'll do it. The Mel Tucker era off to a great start. Buffs improved to 1 0. Colorado State falls to 0 and 1. Fifth consecutive win in the Rocky Mountain Showdown. Colorado off to a great start in 2019. 52 31, the final score. For Kelly Stoffer and Lauren Sisler, I'm Roy Philpott. Don't forget, Sports Center is coming up in 15 seconds.